What is going on YouTube? Chizzy here and I'm back with another Pokemon Emerald Kaizo Monotype Elite Four Challenge. Today we'll be taking on the league with probably the most requested, highly anticipated typing, the Bug Type. If there is one type in the early generations that was severely overlooked by Game Freak and shown no love, it would definitely be the Bugs for sure. From what I've seen, a lot of people think this is not only the most difficult type, but that it is literally impossible to beat the Emerald Kaizo Elite 4 with only bugs. But of course, this is where your boy Chizzy comes in. Let's see what strategies I'm gonna cook up today for this crazy challenge. Do y'all think I can pull off the impossible and win? I love the confidence. Anyways, as always, thank you so much for the support on this series. I wanna test something out real quick. Don't do these too often, but can we get a like goal of 2,000 today? I feel like you guys are gonna just destroy that. Anyways, subscribe and click the bell as well if you haven't already and want to see more content, and let's get straight over to that team builder. As we all know, Bug is one of the weakest typings both offensively and defensively, so we're not going to be able to mess around and pick Trollmons today. Let's just remove every and all Pokemon who are irrelevant and even attempting to win a Kaizo game. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, there's still a few more to remove, not because they're straight garbage, but because they're simply unavailable in the game. In Emerald Kaizo, you cannot in any way, shape, or form obtain Shuckle, Ninkata, or Shedinja. Trust me, they'd normally make the squad for obvious reasons, but this is what makes Kaizo so challenging. Moving on, we actually have a very small pool to choose from now. I left Parasect in here simply as a reminder to y'all that every Pokemon in the league is holding a Lumberry, so it's pretty much completely useless even with access to Spore. Another reminder that we are doing this challenge in set mode, so wasting a slot on Masquerade for Intimidate purposes really won't be effective, since it's really only able to switch in on free turns. You might think Yanma is useful with speed boost, allowing it to outspeed even Deoxys after a Protect, but Deoxys is also the only Pokemon it would really be able to kill. Nothing would even come close to being a 2-hit KO, with both its stabs coming from a physical attack stat of 65. Anyways, this is pretty much as quick as a Chizzy team builder is gonna go. We've already narrowed it down to six Pokemon, and I really do think these are the only remotely viable ones to bring to the league. I'll be explaining each one and its viability in further detail as we hop into their summaries and movesets. Scizor's up first, and even though it doesn't have Technician or Bullet Punch, which are really the main reasons why it's amazing as it is in later gens, I'm still gonna need that incredibly high attack stat to deal with the tanks that roam the league. Quick Claw has saved us so many times, I really couldn't think of anything to run on this thing anyways. I mean, a clutch priority bug move on Mewtwo before it can flamethrower might be pretty good. Speaking of bug moves, we do have X Scissor, or as the ROM hacker calls it, X Scissors, which is an added move to this ROM hack, 80 base power, just like Steel Wing, which got a nice power and accuracy boost. Superpower rounds out a bit of the coverage, and Quick Attack is for ensured priority. Next up is Heracross, the first member of the Beatles. I don't feel like I need to explain this very obvious pick, but I am running the Black Belt to boost its fighting stab, since the only really bad thing about Heracross in Gen 3 is that it doesn't have a strong fighting move. The best you're getting is Brick Break, unfortunately. Heracross is also one of the only bugs in this game to get Mega Horn, so as long as it's not resisted, this is actually the strongest hitter on my team. The second member of the Beatles is its Kanto version, Pinsir, who unfortunately doesn't get that secondary fighting typing, but it does have Intimidate in this ROM hack. I'm running Adamant on all these, by the way, because there are very few Pokemon around the 85 speed tier anyways, so there really isn't something I specifically need to outspeed with Jolly. Speaking of speed though, that's a major problem for the bug type, so when in doubt, I'm gonna need to throw a Quick Claw on as many things I can since I only have one Pokemon above 85 speed against an Elite Four that's got half of its Pokemon above 100 speed. Man, I really don't know how I'm gonna win this. Anyways, no Mega Horn for Pinsir, so we're stuck with the inferior X Scissor. But one thing it has over Heracross besides Intimidate is access to priority Quick Attack. Rock Slide and Earthquake round out some pretty good coverage as well for stuff like Flying or Steel types that X Scissor cannot hit. That one Pokemon who has a decent speed stat on my team is gonna be Scyther with its base 105 speed. I'm running Jolly to maximize that as much as possible, and I believe with the badge boost, it can outspeed stuff like Alakazam, but not quite Mewtwo or Deoxys. We're gonna be holding the Silver Powder, which boosts bug type moves by 10%, and we also have a pretty strong stab move in Air Slash, which has that high flinch chance. I'm also running Aerial Ace only for the sake of hitting Phoebe's double team spammers. 
Fortress is a very unique Pokemon here in that it's really my only true defensive one. It's got the shell armor in this game, so it cannot be crit. I've also got the quick claw on this, of course, just for that infamous Chizzy priority OK Boomer. But as you can see, Explosion's gonna be my only attack. I'm running dual screens as well as spikes on this set. I feel like a full support moveset might really put us over the top here, especially since I have a chance to get up screens first with the quick claw. Last but not least, we have our Maldo, another very unique Pokemon in that it's the only one that doesn't just drop to a single fire move. Anyways, it too cannot be crit, and Quick Claw is once again the only viable item on this. I just need you guys to understand, this challenge is apparently impossible, so I do not feel bad whatsoever running this item. Anyways, we're running Dual Stab, Ancient Power has been boosted to 80 power, and it's just so important to have a Rock Stab against the myriad of flying types in this league. Our model doesn't get Earthquake, but the ROM hacks added Earth Power is only slightly weaker, and Rock Tomb to slow down the opponent to support other members rounds out the set. Anyways, I truly think this is as good as it gets with this typing. This is definitely going to be a wild ride. Without further ado, let's get straight into the battles. As I always say, Sydney leads off with this Mega, Mega Sableye. For the new viewers, Sableye has been boosted to impenetrable defenses in this game, which makes it a huge annoyance since it also has no weaknesses. I start out the game strong by getting crit immediately by Brick Break, and then I proceed to try to 3-8 KO Sableye with X Scissor, which Scissor actually does. Broken Sableye goes down for the count, and Alakazam comes out next. At this point, Scizor isn't going to outspeed anything or take a hit, so it's better for me to sack it to get a free switch into its brother Scyther to outspeed and one-shot it easily with X Scissor. As I said earlier, I know Jolly Scyther can outspeed Alakazam because of the very broken badge boost in Gen 3. Anyways, Machamp curiously comes out, but I am not falling for that bait. I know Air Slash won't be enough to kill, and I also know it's got the Rock Slide, so I make the safer play going into Fortnite to sponge Machamp's physical hits. After also taking a superpower, I'm able to get up a Reflect, and since I can't get crit, I can also set up a layer of spikes before finally going for the boom. The damage rolls are actually pretty close, but luckily my Quick Claw activates here, so I can just take out Machamp with the OK Boomer. We now have the 4 versus 3 advantage here. I bring out Armaldo on the double down as Sydney goes with Jolteon, and this is where that tiny layer of spikes matters so much. I actually calced it after the game. Earth Power has a very small chance of killing Jolteon from full, but thanks to the damage it took coming in, Armaldo gets the KO after sponging Thunderbolt. Sydney goes into Tauros next, which gets off the Intimidate. At this point, I can't live a hit from Houndoom anyways, so there's no point preserving this. I just start spamming Rock Tomb. Funnily enough, I'm able to take two hits from Tauros with my naturally high defense. Unfortunately though, even at minus two speed, Tauros still outspeeds and finishes Armaldo off, which is pretty embarrassing, but I know my win conditions here. Heracross just has to come in and take out Tauros with Brick Break, and for the last Pokemon Houndoom, I still have Scyther saved in the back. Heracross takes both the Intimidate and the Heat Wave for Scyther, gotta recognize a real one right there. And now Scyther should be able to KO Houndoom with its garbage 50 defense, but we get a bit of a scare here as X Scissor barely misses out on the KO. It's down to a 1 on 1, but don't worry, it's Pinsir, and we've got the priority quick attack to narrowly defeat Sydney in game 1. Phoebe and her famous bulky double team mons are always an annoyance to deal with, and her Ghost and Poison type Pokemon are not very bug friendly. She leads off with Gengar first as I lead Scyther, hoping to take advantage of its low defense, but Scyther's honestly weak. We saw the damage it did to Houndoom, so Air Slash only does about 65% to Gengar. Thankfully, we live Thunderbolt, which puts us in swarm range as we outspeed and knock out Gengar the following turn. For some really weird reason, Phoebe brings out Ludicolo. Hey man, I sure as hell can't explain it, but I'll definitely take it. Ludicolo's just an easy one-shot, and if you thought Phoebe was done playing stupidly, you'd be wrong. She brings out Gardevoir next as well, just to die for free to X Scissor. After Gardevoir goes down, she finally brings out the correct Pokemon in Crobat after sacking two for absolutely no reason. I'm gonna actually switch here because Scyther and Swarm range can still be helpful for later. Crobat is just so good against my team because it not only has Air Slash, but also Heat Wave for coverage against Scizor and Fortress. Having that knowledge, my best Pokemon to take it on is Armald, who only takes about 30% from Air Slash. 
My Quick Claw activates here and I get off the Rock Tomb for a speed drop that will help my other members if Armaldo goes down. As I figured, I get put to sleep by Hypnosis, but again, if I don't wake up, that Crobat is at minus one speed. Fortunately though, Air Slash is really not doing enough, Armaldo lives another one at 31 health and is able to wake up and fire back an Ancient Power to not only take it down, but also get a nice Omni Boost for the incoming Mega Mega Sableye. Now I can just go for the plus one X Scissor, which does over half to Sableye, a damage output you really don't see in Emerald Kaizo. Remember when I decided to keep Scyther? This is the perfect time to bring it in while it's in Swarm range. I finish off Sableye easily with X Scissor. Last Pokemon is Mega Dusclops, Scyther gets off Air Slash for a bit of damage as a last ditch attempt, and now I gotta bring in its big sister with the highest attack stat on the team and hope that Stab Steel Wing will be enough. Judging from the first one, as long as rolls are in my favor, it looks like it will in fact be a 2 at KO, but of course we still need to hit our second one after the Dusclops had gone for double team. Fortunately, as you may have guessed, we don't miss and we don't get a low roll, which means Phoebe, who was one of my worst matchups, loses 4 to 0. Glacia is definitely to be feared by our bug team. Our special defense and speed as a team are super low, and her auto rain swift swim strat just doesn't sound too hot right about now. She leads off with her usual Glalie, so I try to take it on with Fortress. Knowing that she has the Weather Ball, I go for Light Screen first so that I can take the next one, but I won't actually need to because Fortress is able to get out of the Priority Explosion. With Glalie out of the way and a Light Screen up, I bring in Heracross to start breaking down her Ice types as soon as possible, but unfortunately, she chooses Mega Wave. Lord. Glacia proves to be much higher IQ than Phoebe and goes for the self-destruct rather than the special move which easily takes out Heracross. I bring in my next best thing to take on Ice types with Armaldo. This time she does bring one in with Regice but unfortunately Ancient Power doesn't kill. Regice just goes for Explosion and because of that extra turn my light screen is now gone as she brings in the one thing I really needed it for. Swift Swim Dugong. Armaldo goes down to Ice Beam and there's only one Pokemon I can bring in to take a hit from this thing which is Scizor. Very fortunately my Quick Claw activates and I get off the Super Power but Dugong somehow lives and kills me back with Surf after the recoil. I simply could not believe a super effective, high base power move coming from a Scizor couldn't take out Dugong. Even though it's in range of Scyther's quick attack now, the game is pretty much over here. Her next Swift Swimmer is Swampert, which outspeeds and bodies Scyther with a times 4 super effective Ancient Power, and then Pinsir's Intimidate doesn't even matter here since they can just go for Muddy Water in the rain which does an incredible amount compared to my X Scissor. Pinsir loses the matchup and we lose the battle 2-0. to zero. I'm definitely gonna need a bit of luck and probably some better damage rolls if I want to win this rematch. I stick with the same strategy though, leading Fortress and going for a Light Screen. This time, Quick Claw activates and I get off Light Screen so that Weather Ball is no longer a 2 hit KO. Glacia still makes the crazy read though and sets up a spike. As I said, her Weather Balls aren't doing as much to me anymore so I'm able to get off two layers of spikes before going for the OK Boomer which puts me in a better spot than the first battle, although that Light Screen is gonna end very soon. This time, I bring in Scizor instead of Heracross to ensure that Waylord doesn't self-destruct on us, and sure enough, it goes for Water Spout which still does an insane amount through the screen, but not quite enough. Scizor finishes off Waylord without taking a casualty from our side. She decides to bring in Regice which is pretty questionable, but what's actually questionable is why I went for Super Power over Steel Wing when the stab boost does the same amount of damage except I wouldn't have knocked myself out. So that was a misplay on my end, Scizor goes down Kamikaze style, but this time we have the 4 on 3. I bring out Heracross on the double down and she once again goes to Dugong. Heracross ends up living the rain boosted surf which is absolutely huge and I'm also able to Oko Dugong with Brick Break which would not have killed without Fortress's crucial spikes. Unfortunately though, the Tongue Twister, Swift Swim Swampert is still such a big problem for this team. I decide to keep Heracross for her last Pokemon Lapras and just go into Armaldo which gets outsped by both anyways, sacking it to Muddy Water. I'm gonna need a stroke of luck here with Pinsir which is the last Pokemon on my team that can take a hit from this thing. Muddy Water brings us down to red health and x Scissor looks to be a 2 at KO. This is where that Quick Claw will decide the difference between a win and a loss and luckily it does activate here, allowing Pinsir to get off the hit, but it looks like a min roll cause Swampert lives on quite literally 1 HP and takes us out. Thankfully, Scyther's got the priority, this is why priority is just so important. Swampert finally goes down and it's Scyther and Heracross versus Lapras. Especially after the spike damage, X Scissor definitely brings Lapras down to Brick Break range as Scyther falls to super effective Ice Beam. 
This should be my game here. I definitely outspeed and kill Lapras, but I totally forgot it actually has the priority Ice Shard, which I live with two health. Two freaking HP and a dream. Heracross is an absolute beast, and we win our second game against Glacia, hanging on to dear life. As if that wasn't crazy enough, this is where most bug runs have ended. I keep hearing Drizzy Drake is virtually impossible. Let's see how this goes. I lead Scyther because it's the only thing faster than Latios, but even a Silver Powder boosted Egg Scissor doesn't quite do enough. Yet another 1 HP live saves Drake from the biggest threat to his team as Scyther falls to Draco Meteor. Now my entire team is going to be outsped, so I don't see a way of possibly winning this. I bring out Scizor on the double down as Drake just sends out his other Lottie. Remember, these things have Soul Dew, which is essentially a free Calm Mind Boost upon switch in. He reveals the HP Fire. I don't have a switch in anyway, so I just had to let Scizor die. Now I can bring out Armaldo, which can take one hit. Luckily though, Drake gets greedy here and sets up a Calm Mind, which honestly is a common theme. If you watch my other Monotype videos, you'd know he always sets up way too much. Latias goes down in one hit, and Titar is out next. I still need Armaldo for his flying types, so I go Heracross to take an Ancient Power and fire back a times 4 super effective Brick Break to knock it out. Just like all his other Pokemon, Ments coming in means he just gets to outspeed and get a free kill. I'm honestly cool with sacking Heracross here so I can go back out into Armaldo. Unfortunately, no Quick Claw activation here, we'll have to take a Draco Meteor which does a lot of damage, but the recoil that Salamence takes helps ensure an Ancient Power Oko. Drake has two Pokemon left in Kingdra and Dragonite while I have three, but not for long since Armaldo's gonna go down easily to an Octazooka. I only have one play here. I need to play smart and go into Fortress first because I cannot have Fortress be my last Pokemon since it only has Explosion for an attacking move. And remember, even ties count as losses in Pokemon. I go for the OK Boomer, it didn't matter that Quick Claw activated since I could have taken one Octazooka anyways, and Kingdra going down sets up the 1 vs 1 matchup between Pinsir and Dragonite. Because of the crucial Intimidate, I should have the upper hand in this matchup here. Our first Rock Slide does 60%, which is a 2 hit KO, as Dragonite goes for Dragon Dance, put it back to plus zero attack. My Quick Claw does activate here to take out Dragonite, but at plus zero, Dragonite could not have possibly taken me out anyways, so that obviously didn't matter and we just kind of beat Drake, the one that was said to be impossible, with no hacks necessary on the first try in set mode. It's time for Champion Steven, I honestly went to this just not expecting to win the first game period, since he does have an Aerodactyl with Dual Stab and Flamethrower that just clicks buttons on my entire team, amongst several other threats I can't do much to. One positive though is that Steven leads off with Metagross, which is the perfect opportunity for Fortress to set up as much support as possible. I prioritize spikes because the idea is, I want to have my screens up for as long as possible after I die, there's no point in setting them up now since he really can't do much to me with Earthquake. Although he gets up in agility, he allows me to set up all three layers, a Reflect, and a light screen. That is literally a Fortress's dream come true, and on top of that, I get to bow out with an OK Boomer that does over half to a huge threat to the rest of my team. I bring out Pinsir after Fortress goes down since I have access to Earthquake, but he actually makes an insane read and switches out directly to Aerodactyl. Since the Reflect is up, I figured I might as well save Pinsir and switch directly into Armaldo on the Sky Attack, which does minimal damage with my Reflect up. Unfortunately, the screen goes down right when I needed it the most. It is imperative that Armaldo takes this Ancient Power, cause otherwise the rest of my team just drops to this thing. Thankfully, we do take the hit with Red Health, and I'm able to Oko back with a single Ancient Power. I'm sure a lot of you didn't expect Armaldo to be this good. What's up with the Gen 3 fossils? Remember when Cradilly killed it for me in my Grass Monotype 2? Anyways, Starmie Revenge kills us, but we know Scyther can just outspeed and KO it back with X Scissor. And here it comes, Steven sends out the giant threat Mewtwo. I quite literally don't have a switch into this, so I'm forced to stay in and try to take a flamethrower. Luckily for us, it's a non-stab move, and not only do we survive with red HP, but it's actually better that we got hit by that flamethrower because it puts Scyther in swarm range, which allows us to one-shot Mewtwo. That was definitely the play of the game right there. Now Deoxys comes out, but I have multiple priority users. Scyther goes down after getting off damage, but Pinsir should be able to finish the game for us. 
Jaxie's falls to the second quick attack, and all that's left is Steven's steel types. I get a pretty solid EQ off on Jirachi that doesn't bring it down, but I know I should be able to survive Fire Punch as well. Unfortunately, Steven does get the burn, but it's too little too late. The second EQ takes out Jirachi, and all that's left is his Metagross at half health. The spikes take its toll on Metagross, and even with my attack cut in half, it is way too low to be able to take Pinsir's Earthquake, and we have just completed the impossible. Ya boy just beat the Emerald Kaizo Elite 4 with Bug-type Pokemon. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm not gonna lie, I expected this to be way harder than it was. I gotta say, I'm honestly pretty impressed with myself here because I expected a lot more than just one loss. To me, fire type was actually a little bit harder. As always, remember to click the thumbs up button if you liked the video, subscribe if you're new and want to see more content, remember to comment down below and let me know what type you want to see next. Remember though, I can only do one at a time so I will get to yours eventually. Anyways, I've completely lost my voice, I'll see you guys next time. Did it, did it, deuces.